So in this video, I just want to show you some of the different ways that you can work with the ML Elite Kit, different ways to set things up and how it kind of functions out in the real world a little bit. I have a really simple scene set up. We have our house band here and trust goalpost and a video wall. Pretty simple setup here. So let's take a closer look. I've got all of my ML systems here just in one folder, just so I can easily find them and get to them. Uh, so here along the top, we have, this is an ML1, and I've put this into just a standard cinema cloner. So you can do that. There is the ML1 CS, which is set up for uh, cloning. But in this case, I wanted to be able to have pan and tilt instead of a target. So I just used an ML1 here and put that into a regular cloner. And then on the side here, vertically, I have this, um, this ML1 CS, which is hanging vertically. And I've actually rotated the whole setup around to kind of hang it sideways. So you can do that. You can spin these uh, assemblies around any way that you need to. Uh, you could, if you wanted to, just keep everything vertical the way it is and clone it in Y and, you know, maybe add some side arms. But I wanted to show you here that you can actually spin this stuff around if you need to. Uh, we have uh, some ML3s on the floor here. And uh, we're going to, you might notice that this and the verticals are only on half the stage. So... We're going to do some symmetry here to show you how that works. And then out front here, I just have two kind of gobo flanks here. And these are not in symmetry. These are just two separate units. And I've just put them all into a folder. And then we've got our video wall upstage here. So that's it. So that's the basic kind of setup here. Uh, let's jump into our Redshift layout here. And we'll start to do some work here. Turn this on. There we go. So that's this is just the baseline setup here. Nothing fancy. I'm going to keep it simple for this. Uh, I do want to mention here, while I'm working, let's just talk about Redshift settings for a second. While I'm working, I have this set to bucket quality low. And I've turned on denoising with the Optics X. So it makes things look a little kind of blurry and fuzzy out here. This is not my favorite denoising. I usually like Altus Single. But I've found that this is really good just for uh, working. And it gives me the cleanest, kind of fastest look. Uh, and so I can still really tell what's going on. And then the quality just increases when we go to do the final rendering. So I'll up these settings for final rendering. Uh, Red, you can get really deep with Redshift settings, and I try not to. <laughs> but, um, but here we are. So that's how this is set up just for working here right now. So let's go ahead and uh, add in some symmetry here to kind of get this system flipped over. So I have this, uh, this ML1 CS here on the vertical. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a symmetry object. And then I'm going to take this CS and drop it in here. And when you first do it, you'll see that nothing happens. Well, something happens. We've got our light. And on the other side, we have one light. All of the other lights have disappeared except for the lens and we're still not getting actually the light to do what we want it to do. So what's going on? Well, in the symmetry object, we have to come in here and check this keep parametric box. And as soon as we check this, the system will now start working and responding as needed. You'll also notice it's added this red line here. This is just this plane. If you don't like this, just uncheck show planes. That's all you have to do. And now this system is set up just the way that we want. So the target here is right on the singer. And you'll see that no matter where we move this now, the lights will follow from both sides of the stage. So the symmetry works really well with this. 
So you can set it up really easily that way. So let's do that again for the floor units here. Oh, so then now I'm going to name this. So we'll call this like uh, vertical spots, whatever makes sense for you. Just as you kind of flip around in here, it makes it easier to find it. So same thing here. I'm going to take the floor units here. The floor units are not on. We'll turn these on so you can see them. And I'm just going to add a generic symmetry object here. I'm going to drop the floor unit into it. It's going to break the system. And then we're going to turn on keep parametric. And we'll turn off show planes. And now we should have a working system here. We do. So there you go. So you can absolutely just turn this off for right now. You can absolutely use symmetry with these objects really well, even if you've taken the whole unit and kind of spun it around. It still really is just going to lock into this target. And I'm in target mode here, but if I go to parallel, it's going to work as well. So the whole system works just like we think reverse will work here as well, if you want to kind of flare out instead of in. So that's really nice. And then... Um, these gobo floor flanks here, gobo floor flanks, that's hard to say. I just want to show you, uh, these are not in symmetry. They're two separate instruments because I want to do different things with them. But I do want to point out that you can grab two instruments at the same time, assuming they're the same kind of light. And you can actually do some of this manipulation to these things here. So we can kind of play with the tilt a little bit and change the color. So I'm actually manipulating two different instruments here at the same time. Where this will break is the pan, of course, because if you're trying to do a symmetrical thing, it's not really going to happen with the pan. So that's where you might have to say, you know, grab one. And for this one, we'll go like negative 60. And on this one, we'll go positive 60. And and now they're mirroring each other if you want. But if you don't want them to mirror each other, you now just have the option. So um, really, you could put these into symmetry if you really wanted them to always align. Um, but if you don't, then you can still manipulate these kind of uh, at the same time by just selecting more than one. So that's really handy as well. So now let's talk about animation for a minute. I don't want to go too deep down the rabbit hole here, but I just want to show you that you can animate all of the properties of these lights, just like any other object in Cinema 4D. So if we take these truss lights back here, and maybe we'll take the tilt down to zero, the normally in Cinema 4D, there's a small diamond icon here next to all of these um, kind of input commands for regular objects. Um, here you can see if I go to the camera, this is what they normally kind of look like. In the ML system, these all actually still work the same way. The icon is just different because this is showing us that these things are being driven by Expresso in the background, but they still are the same buttons and work exactly the same way. So if we wanted to animate the tilt on these lights, we could come in here, I'm on frame zero, and I'm just gonna click once to keyframe on that. And then I'll slide forward here in time, and maybe we'll just take this up to 90. You can see when you change it, right, it goes orange. And so then we'll just click again here. And so now you can see here, I'm gonna just turn off our renderer for a second to not freak it out. So now if we play here, you can see over and over and over again here that we do actually have this nice animation going here. Here, we'll fire this up again. See if we kind of stumble our way through it. So just like any other object inside of Cinema 4D that you can animate, all of the commands and inputs for the ML lighting system work exactly the same way. So you can just keep doing whatever you're used to doing with animation. All right, let's talk about working with the takes system. This is my preferred way to write cues. 
If you're not familiar with the TIG system in Cinema 4D, I'm going to encourage you to do a little research and learn more about how the system works. I'm not going to do a full tutorial on the system, but I'll show you how the ML system integrates into it. So let's jump over to the takes tab here. By default, we have our main take, right? So you always have a main take and that's basically your load in look. This is kind of your setup. So if you're gonna change geometry, if you're gonna update the scene, as far as kind of the structure of it, the main take is where you're gonna do it. All the future takes that we're gonna make here, those are gonna become our cues. So let's go ahead and make a new take and we'll call this one Q1. And so now I'm gonna turn on auto take. You have to be really careful with this one this is going to record all of your changes into this take. Normally, I manually override functions, but I've found that there are just so many sliders and different controls within the ML system. The fastest way to do it is to use auto takes and just be really careful. As I get further down the road of revisions and I'm just changing one thing or another thing, then I'll start to use override. But for the initial writing, I'm just gonna turn on auto takes. You know you're in auto take when everything is purple. So if you're in purple mode here, that means it's recording everything that you're doing. So just be careful, okay? So first things first, let's go ahead and take this light and we'll change its color. So we'll make this guy orange. And then maybe we'll go here to the verticals and why don't we change these to parallel beams and then we'll take the target here and move this. So this is, this is going to record for us all of our movements and our different, um, kind of light functions as well. So that looks good. Uh, these pink gobos look a little weird. So why don't we just turn these guys off in this one? And then, all right, let's call that good. So that's Q1. Now I'm gonna turn off the auto take, stop recording. Everything's gone back to its normal color here. And so you can see here, if we go back to the main take, here's our first look, right? This is our load in look. This is where we started. And now if I click into Q1 here, now we've got this set up here as Q1. So when we wanna go and write the next Q, you have two options. If you hit the plus sign and make a new take, it's gonna give you a new blank take based off of your main look. So you're starting from scratch. Or you can duplicate Q1 and that's gonna let you build off of what we already have going in Q1 here. So let's do that. Let's take this, I'm gonna hold control and just click and drag. And now we've got a new one and we'll call this Q number two. So let's activate this one. And then again, we're gonna activate auto take. Everything will go purple here. And now in this one, why don't we, let's see here. Why don't we turn on the floor spots here? And sorry, the ML3s, the bars. And let's get rid of this horrible color here. Change this. Maybe we'll lower these down a little bit more. And, uh, you know, the other thing I want to do here is, well, I'll take this and kind of change this. We'll move this back over to zero. I'm going to write a really bad light cue here. And then the last thing I want to do is I'm going to take the video wall here and we're actually just going to change the content. So I'm going to grab a new piece of content here and just drag and drop this guy in. And there you go. Really ugly cue number two. And we'll hit stop here. And so now we've recorded yet another cue. And we just this is how you just keep building stuff. So if we go back to the main setup here, you can see this is where we started. This is our load and look. And then we can cycle through here. We've got Q1. And then now if we change over here, we've got Q2. And that's it. So that's how you work with takes with the ML lighting system.